Of all the things that are Android related that you announced today, what's the most exciting to you and why? We announced a lot today at I.O. Uh, you know, there are now two billion monthly active devices in the world running Android devices. That's very humbling and, and it's a huge number obviously and it's hard to even comprehend. Uh, but we're really excited about that. We also announced uh, the beta for Android O, which is our next uh, release of Android. Uh, and also we announced a new configuration of Android, starting with Android O, that we call Android Go, uh, which is really aimed at devices in emerging markets, you know, devices that have one gigabyte of RAM or less, and really making that experience great for those users. Uh, so those are some of the examples of, of the, a lot of things that we announced today. What progress do you think you've made over the last year with Android N? So we announced Android N uh, last year and, and launched it in the fall. A uh, number of devices have launched with Android N and many devices are now upgrading to Android N. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there and the, and the rollout continues. So with Android O, what sort of new security features are you integrating? What are you doing to combat fragmentation? Well, around fragmentation, there's a lot that we're doing. It's, it's something that we've been uh, working with the industry on for many years now. Uh, specifically, this year, we announced uh, Project Treble, what we call Project Treble, uh, which is a re-architecting of the lower layers of Android. A, a customer won't notice it, but for the industry, it's a big deal. We've completely redesigned the bottom part of Android that, that deals with the hardware to make it really easy for manufacturers and operators, the people who sell Android devices, to update these devices and, and really uh, have a, a, a sort of quicker turnaround times. And what about security? What new security precautions have you introduced? I mean, the world is weathering another global cyber attack. Yeah, so around security, we've been doing a lot uh, for many years now. Uh, one of the things we realized was a lot of what we've been doing has been behind the scenes. Um, uh, there's a lot of protections that we've put in place, obviously the architecture of Android to begin with, but also protections we put into place through Google Play. We actually scan all your apps, all apps in the world, we're scanning them all the time, but we realized no user of Android was aware that we were doing this. So we've now put uh, these systems sort of front and center for the user so they can see what we're doing uh, so that they can have a sense of security uh, and that actually reflects the real state of the world. We call that Google Play Protect and that's something that we'll be rolling out very soon. Last year you introduced something called Instant Apps which lets users stream their apps via search. Uh, what kind of progress have you made there? We've been uh, in beta with Instant Apps uh, since last I.O. We've been working with many developers on this and getting their feedback and really improving the infrastructure for that. And actually, uh, starting this week, we're expanding that so that anyone, not just a beta, uh, any developer can now develop Instant Apps, uh, which really facilitates sort of making it easier for users to get their apps without having to go through the installation process. Now, Pixels, the new phones that Google has been making, reportedly haven't sold very well. How has that impacted Android? So Pixel is, a, is an Android phone developed by the hardware team within Google. Uh, you know, on the platform side, I work with everyone, all the manufacturers, so Samsung, I'm using a Samsung phone right now, for instance, LG, Huawei, you name them. Uh, and so, you know, we, we don't really comment on any particular device from an Android perspective. We're just happy to have more device manufacturers out there really targeting their user segments. And, and that's what makes Android great, is it's, it's really a scaled ecosystem across multiple partners. You've announced new uh, auto dashboard systems with Volvo and Audi. What is Android's strategy in the car? Well, we have a number of uh, products available for the car. Uh, the first one we call projected mode, which basically enables a customer to take their Android phone, plug it into their car, uh, and, and have, the, uh, have the phone power the car's infotainment system. That's been available now for a while now. Uh, there's hundreds of car models out there that support this already. Uh, what uh, Audi and Volvo announced is actually running Android itself in the car directly so that you don't need a phone anymore. Uh, and, and it's kind of a behind the scenes thing, right? It's, it's how the car manufacturers are making their cars. They happen to be using Android, which makes it possible for Android developers to bring their apps and services easier into the car environment. We're expecting a big redesign of the iPhone from Apple later this year. And I'm curious, as the head of Android, how do you brace yourself for the iPhone revamps? It's an exciting time to be a consumer because there's just so much, so much going on, so many manufacturers working on interesting innovations. And so I think it's a good thing, you know, and, and it keeps the Android manufacturers on their toes and it makes them work harder, makes us work harder. Uh, so I, I think it's great. Are you wearing an Android smartwatch? Because I'm curious what's holding Android back in 
wearables. I am wearing an Android Wear watch right now. A uh, uh, lot of progress there. We've announced a lot of fashion brands have also adopted Android Wear. We make, as you know, our, our platform available to anyone to build products on uh, products with, uh, and that's our strength. And, and we've ha we have a lot of partners now in the fashion industry as well as consumer electronics industry building Android Wear-based watches.